Okay, well, it's a great pleasure to have Scott Morrison here, the first of his three talks here, yeah, it's yeah. live in, in, in the week. So Scott's going to talk about how I finished my thesis. Yeah, yeah. so uh, as, as Juan indicated, uh, the thing that I'm talking about today is in some sense the, um, the second half of a project that constituted my thesis. Um, I don't know if Juan at the time fully realized that I'd only done half of the problem <laughs> and there was a second half that really needed to be done too. Um, but it's been bothering me for a while that I sort of only got halfway through some project. And so uh, this is uh, some work that I did with Phil Kamenzer, who's at Toronto and Southern Cup, who's at uh, USC, yeah, University of Southern California. Oh, yeah? He invited me to look at Yeah. And where you go to? I understand. You should go, yeah. <laughs> There's actually a bunch of good people at USC now, so, yeah. Okay, so, um, I think that probably everyone, is it, is it true that everyone here has said that? Okay, so, uh, yeah, I mean, just, so what I was going to say is that if I was giving this talk anywhere else, I'd begin by talking about what a pivotal category is and explain how pivotal categories let you draw, draw pictures. But I think I'm just going to skip that and uh, instead use the language of planar algebras. Uh, and uh, if you don't understand what some picture means at some point, ask me and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about what I mean by the pictures. Okay. So the. Let's have a title. So, the point here is that um, a while ago, Craig Kuhnberg introduced this word, spider, an element which is a web, strangely, um, which is really just yet another axiomatization of a pivotal category or, or a planar algebra and so on. But the, 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 the particular thing that he had in mind was uh, to find a diagrammatic presentation to uh, so diagrammatic generated simulations for all the venture of the algebras. So all that okay. Uh, all that UQ, so you did the quantum version as well. The Start with the rank one case, which happened before the rank, which is that you look at the representation in the, you can, the, the fact that I'm talking about the quantum versions is which you can sort of ignore if you, if you want to. Uh, the story is essentially parallel to classical and quantum cases. There's just quantum entities instead of normal entities in certain places if you understand that quantum theory. So anyway, let's look at SL2. Well, this category. It's essentially the same as uh, the temporary category at the parameter value q plus q inverse. So, well, what, what is this category? Well, the objects are just uh, the natural numbers, which you may just think of as some points arranged along the line, and then long, the point to n, I just temporary diagrams. This is a, a home from uh, four points to six points here. And the, uh, the, the composition of the category is a static diagram on top of each other. It's a tensor category. You can tensor two morphism tests sitting side by side. And there's a relation. When you stack two diagrams on top of each other, you put your loop. So it's 
components in space and all of this diagram is modular conversion to the circle is compressed to the Okay. So here it is very explicitly described in physicality for you. This is sort of the, the, one of the fundamental objects in any planar algebra. So what is this asymorphism? Well, the object one here is, uh, is going to uh, be the standard representation, so two dimensional representation. And uh, should that make a little bit more space? But then the object n is going to the tensor power of the standard representation. Okay? And the, the so at least if you're just looking at tensor powers of the standard representation over this side, you're claiming this asymptotism is the the space of linear maps from the nth tensor power to the nth tensor power, commuting with the act of this group, is exactly given by these diagrams and the relations they satisfy and the relations you get by seeing these diagrams together and, uh, and remembering two group circles to a fact of people's So is this supposed to be true for the two of these circles? Yeah. Semi-simple version of this is perfect. I mean, well, so the semi-simple version is definitely true. I guess I'm sure you've got down. If you look at a representation of this guy before you semi-simplify, then I think the relationship is quite between this and the, and the, the version, this, the degenerate version of this before you semi I don't think that's understood. So, okay, I It's interesting that there's yeah, so it's one thing, yeah, yeah, so one thing I know is that you finally get all the way up to here and you're looking at Greg Spider G2 and Rev G2, then before you see the same as the okay, those things are not the same. And That's so they're true. really hard to the same. There is some discrepancy there before you see the But yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's. Okay, so where were we? So at least in the little piece of this representation theory where you're only looking at tensor powers as standard representation, everything is just described by what's going on over here. What about objects that aren't just tensor powers as standard representation, like three dimensional representation? Well, really what you should say is this isomorphism is only telling you about this particular subcategory of where the objects are tensor powers in the standard representation. But every object that you would expect that here appears inside some tensor power. So you can sort of ignore this, this, this little problem. This is a, we're really talking about some, some category of the full representation category that's, that's gone. Every object in the bigger category exists as a sub-object in this little one. So we don't have to worry so much about those things. Okay, there's one further incredibly annoying problem, which is that this theorem isn't true. Uh, and that you, you have to slightly, you have to take to my unimodal version of this representation category, which I'm not going to get into the debate, but you have to change something about the category before it's actually put on these diagrams. And it's a slightly more complicated thing to just go back inside if you don't want to make that uh, It's a fun story, but not for today. Okay. No, 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 this is, I mean, this is to do with um, the way you think that the circle can be customized oh. to the stage. Okay, so this is a, maybe I should say what, what the template lead category looks like in terms of of this trace here, and how it generates relations. Well, here there are no generators. Okay, we've got some we've got some planar algebra that just consists of streams. There are no interactions between the streams. So let's let's do another example. Question three. Some great paper. Here, happily, you don't have to do this funny unimodal version of things. 
is actually a nice focus on the nodes. So the pre-proposed result is that this is the planar algebra generated by two types of vertices. Now notice I'm using planar algebra in a slightly liberal sense. I don't mean a subtractive planar algebra like one loves. I, uh, I'm happy to allow labels on my edges or oriented edges and so on. So in this case, I don't have labels on my edges, but I need, or I need to keep back oriented edges on my edges. So I'm looking at, really what I'm saying is I'm looking at, at planar graphs which are locally modeled on these two pictures. So they're planar trigonal graphs with oriented edges, and the trigonal vertices and oriented edges are all in the rollout. Modular with pure relations, which are, you see a closed circle, that's uh, Say what that is for once and help forever. I mean, talking about quantum numbers. Uh, you see a bigon is negative one two times it's line straight through, and finally, uh, you see a square. That's the sum of these two diagrams. Okay. No there. It's just, just like that. So again, it's the, the same sort of statement here. We're only looking at the subcategory here of objects which look like the tensor products of the standard and the dual of the standard representation. The, the you know when you're talking about the standard or the dual of the standard representation by looking at your arrows are oriented upwards or downwards. Here's some explicitly presented category on the right that captures everything on the, on the left, uh, at least those objects. But all objects, all the representations of SL3 are a sub object to some object like this. So that's great. Okay. And so here, those are the generators here at the So the point of today is uh, to do uh, all of the SLI. Not just these first two cases. So, a little bit of history on this. Uh, a student of Greg Gutenberg's from here for him uh, conjectured the, a presentation for n equals 4. And in my thesis, I conjectured the presentation for all n. Uh, and what I could show was, uh, well, what I had. I had the um, I had some, I think you have some exquisite diagrammatic thing given by generators and relations that now go to this, and you could realize every, every morphism between representations by one of my diagrams, but I didn't know if there was any kernel to this map, if there were further relations amongst my diagrams that I really should have put in there if I wanted to make my diagram just more to that, that representation. But now, could you show that your relations are not to cause one dimensional collapse? Uh, Okay. Um, sounds like I made a lucky escape. <laughs> um, okay. So let's um, start describing what fills in that question mark. Uh, maybe we'll run on your reason. Let me just very quickly mention why I don't want to do something like this. Why should you care about uh, um, one of these diagrammatic presentations of representation category. One thing is that it gives you uh, efficient ways to compute uh, uh, quantum invariance of, of knots and free manifolds. Uh, essentially, uh, rather than taking some big knot and following some scheme to work out the, the quantum knot invariant, you can work with it, you can start with some small subtangle of a knot, write that as some linear combination of these diagrams. And then use the relations to simplify diag to diagrams for a while, and then add another crossing, and then simplify again, and then add another crossing, and simplify again. Uh, and the, the point of having the, the, this local presentation with relations is that you do incremental simplification as you work. As you work. Well, isn't that really true of the state sum things as well? Um, you could say, no, if you want to do some of the one copy, you could have a chunk, and then you have the vector space corresponding to the. Coming out of the I mean, I 
think that the I think that the vector spaces that you were putting yeah, here are uh, uh, bigger than the, than the, than the span and diagram. So, yeah, I mean, it's always this, and it's always the, the maximum oh, size. Oh, 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 one couldn't do that in this one. There's, there's a state sum for every universal representation in the look of that, but you're going to get that to work universally. Yeah, you can certainly use labels and you can find a state for every representation. And this is also a kind of work kind of uniformly for all in one area. Yeah, you don't have to set it up there. So that's huge. The other thing that this is good for is that, um, well, uh, having these diagrammatic presentations has historically been very helpful for understanding categorifications of all of these chronic deficits, uh, in particular the pure reverse SL3 cases were useful. Some people were just categorifying. Okay. So we can go back to our grandchildren. Yeah, and now uh, this time I'll tell you the conjecture at the end. Okay, so here's the, the free SLN spider. This is just going to be some kind of, I'm going to tell you the generators I want to use, but I'm not going to make any, any relations yet. So first of all, maybe I can tell you what my labels are on strands. I'm going to have oriented strands with labels 1, 3, n, depending on which n the word you can hear the, the generators that you can allow. You can take two generators labeled by a and b, fuse them together, get a plus b, fold them apart, and a plus b. And you also have Now, what's going on here? Why, why do you expect to have generators like this? Well, over the representation theory, well, okay. before I define any relations, I can, I can define a map from this planar algebra to the sort of planar algebra of representations of this one. So what is that? The other structure in the pattern. And uh, I can talk about that in a moment. tell you about that. But something to notice is that uh, this diagrammatic morphism that's going to correspond to this isomorphism, I, I'm drawing it in such a way that it has two different sides. I can tell which way this little tag is facing. That's, that's going to matter. So this little tag is not a uh, sort of program? Uh, it's not, but it is often very helpful. Think of it as being a special case of a Python vertex with an edge label by n, which I'm otherwise not allowing uh, coming in there. And in fact, uh, later, well, maybe let me just do it right now. Um, this is an add on of notation that will be convenient uh, to allow 0 and n edges. What does notation mean? 
we can see our radius. So we can go up there. And pages and tags as follows. Name. Well, name. Okay, so let me now tell you all the relations that I want to put on, on these diagrams. Uh, I sort of want to keep these up for a while. Maybe I'll put them way over here. Okay, Tags. You, can, uh, you can flip it over, possibly at the expense of the sign, to a tag on the other side. So let me maybe just sort of justify that relation briefly in terms of the representation theory. Uh, these tags are, are both confusing and important in this whole problem. Uh, let's say you're looking at uh, n equals 2. Okay? Remember, I told you before that. that the SL2 case was just temporary linear, but there weren't any tags there. But remember, I had this funny unimodal business in, in there. The unimodal business was to allow me to not have tags. But now I'm doing things properly. And I have to have tags. So what is this? Well, so V, the standard representation of SL2, uh, is self fuel. Okay? So there's some isomorphism. From V to V dual. Okay. But if you take this isomorphism and uh, rotate it by 180 degrees, okay, so, so what's, the, what's this little diagram here? It's got a V coming out the bottom and a V dual coming out the top, okay? But then this little cap you should think of as a Pairing between V dual and V, so there's a V coming in there and a V dual coming up there. So I've produced another diagram that's another morphism from V to V dual. Okay? It turns out that, well, we need to put a negative sign in there. This, this rotated version of the isomorphism is equal to the multiple of the isomorphism, but there really is a sign. And this is just saying that uh, the standard representation of SL2 is anti symmetrically self dual. The, the Trevini Turo indicator is minus one. And this is exactly what these signs are here. They're telling us how the rotation is acting on, uh, on, on these estimates. So it's just the same thing as the disorientation? Exactly the same thing. Yeah. So, so, so Vaughn's question is about uh, Corona homology, where uh, the, original category, the original version of Corona homology was sort of categorifying the template leave algebra that I described at first, but it had all these horrible sign problems. And it turns out, if you, if you remember this issue, Stick the tags back in to the template of E and categorize, categorize that instead of giving an acid version of the problem. I think I was, if I said that for years and years, probably. It's very likely, yeah. I mean, I've been saying it for years and years, because you remember that history. You can have a little time to say it for even more years. Okay. So here. Relations like this you certainly expect. I mean, this is some map. If you think about what goes on over the representation theory, this is some map from an irreducible representation from k plus L to k plus L. So by Schur's number, it's going to be some multiple of the identity. So there's nothing that's surprising here except that I'm telling you exactly what the multiple is. Um, more.
same here, two vertices of the same type. Fused vertex next to another fixed vertex, you can, uh, can remap the tree if you see many of those vertices. Uh, so, this is sort of like the associativity relation. Uh, and then finally, Finally, what's this one saying? Well, if you see a little square like this, so sorry, these are all objectives there, where you send the x across that way, but then send the r back across that way, you can rewrite this as a linear combination of squares to sort of work the opposite way. You send some amount of stuff over to the left first, and then you send some back. Okay? These are coefficients. You get one by two coefficients. Sorry, can I just write yeah. down what, uh, what quantum n is? Oh yeah. Um, so the quantum n uh, is uh, due to the uh, n minus q negative n over q minus q inverse, or if we want the x plus q to be n minus one plus q to be minus q. So these are all the relations. So we're going to look at diagrams generated by those two or three boxes, modulate these relations, and we can see this captures all the representation here in this side. So how on earth is this going to go? From the, from the spider of these relations to the representation theory. Okay, so here's the idea of the proof. So far we've just been drawing pictures, but suddenly we're going to start doing a whole lot of representation theory. Um, Could we throw a bow bow if you have gamma in the picture before? Yeah, so, um, so I think I, I, I told you most of it here. So I need to tell you, all I need to do is tell you what it doesn't generate, and with this standard obligation to show that it's well defined, maybe, but what it actually does. There's a, so there's a, there's a one dimensional space of maps in the representation theory from weight A takes the weight B to weight A plus B, and at least if you're working with classic, it would be obvious which, which map you may fit. And we're sending this sort of vertex to that map. So this sort of vertex. Way and sending these tags to these decimal points. There's a little bit, I mean, maybe I need to say a little bit more. Um, I need to tell you what to do with critical points. This, thing. this is, uh, this is the, so you should be thinking this is the pairing between uh, the dual of the eighth history of power and the eighth history of power. So this is being sent. So that's the specified on the end of this. Now, uh, you can then actually just go and check directly, which involves a little bit of few component drawings, but it's pretty easy to get all these relations. I still want to understand the basis. So you find the map from the spider, yep. it says pictures, with yep. boundaries, and it is coming out with arrows and nothing on them. Yep. And that's going to to the representation theory of, of, of SLA. So, so yeah. uh, okay. of, the, of, of which picture? A, a thing with arrows coming out of it. That's supposed to be a common. Well, okay, so, so what's this concept doing? I mean, if you see, um, 
other model of objects to say, at the, along the bottom end with some feature, you see a pointer oriented upwards, a pointer oriented downwards, a pointer oriented upwards, labeled by A, B, and C. That's being sent to the object where the tensor where the and tensor where C. Okay? So you send uh, a dog labeled by A, the A gets very enough, and depending on whether that, that dog is oriented up or down, uh, you send a bit of that representation. So the representations of the cell are not just a few cells. Oh yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm only defining the map this way. I mean, I have to tell you about the Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, here, as as before in SL2 and SL3 cases, we're looking at the subcategory of uh, of uh, tensor products. Now, that's just some, some subset of the objects of the full representation category. And that, we're only, we're only getting an equivalence for that, the full subcategory on those objects. But this subcategory is gone again. Every, every representation appears inside some of these things. I mean, the way to see this is just, the way to see that these objects are dominant is just to figure out the, uh, well, the sort of positive round chamber for, for the SLN. Say you look at SL3, the irreducible representations. I mean, by the last points in the positive power chamber. The, object, the our favorite objects here, the exterior powers, are exactly these ones so that, that generate the cone that you're looking at. Some of us would produce it from some boxes. Characters are. Characters are. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, this little picture very quickly tells you where to look for different objects, and if you want to find. This guy, you take uh, the you take the three three tensor factors of the, the standard representation and one tensor factor of your you'll find that one sitting the fourth is the one. So I mean how much so uh, so I'm interested in the full category, full reduced representation of this one. Sure. How do I reduce the structure? Yeah, so uh, there is essentially a lot more work. Um, so let's see, there, there are sort of two possible answers you can give to a question like that. One, you can uh, you could uh, describe a much bigger diagrammatic category where now you have edges labeled by arbitrary UFs and a trigonal vertex, well, maybe uh, for, for representations lambda mu and mu, uh, a trigonal vertex corresponding to each invariant vector in, in lambda tensor mu tensor mu, maybe as many of them. Uh, and the nice thing about this case is that there's always one dimensional spaces. Uh, the trigonal vertex is always one dimensional spaces. But you could do that, and then the order generated and the relations presentation would be, well, it would just be all of the i equals a. Giving all the six fixed symbols for this tensor pattern. You can give a presentation that looks like so. Generate a symbol of this form, and you have to put an extra label on the vertex, which is like nothing on the original spaces, and then you have relations that just say whenever you have this, you can rewrite it as a sum with some coefficients of a diagram like this. So I mean, the complete set of six J symbols for the representation theory also counts as as, as, as a presentation. But I mean, computing all these six J symbols is is not a thing. But we could do a multiple reduce the from multiple. Uh, I mean, you can write relatively efficient algorithms for. Evaluating particular six J symbols using using all this. Um, okay. 
But I mean, I don't think that that is a really good answer. So another thing that you can do is uh, have explicit formulas for uh, the iron bones picking out the you have inside one of these objects. So uh, with the transcendental iron bones in Resol 2 are picking out surnames inside the images of uh, And there are a couple of special cases of that that are done, but in the main two cases we know explicit formulas for and I think maybe that's a more productive way to go rather than sort of expecting to have some better, better to learn some better sort of to almost through logical to do this thing. Yeah, so I think that is a way to do it. Yeah, and it is a way to do it. I mean, for all kinds of categories. Yeah, good. So let's leave that on a, on a, on a interesting open problem. This uh, list right down all the other components for arbitrary directs sitting inside of it, or sitting inside of it. The, the canonical of it is small, small, small. Okay. okay. So what is this all going to look like? Let me draw a new community that. So here's the spider, and here's our point for gamma n, which takes us over here. What are we going to do? Well, for each m, we're going to see that there's a map from the actual quantum group, the, 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 the quantized developing algebra of GL. Down into here. So, this is already some extreme going on. And this is a representation category, and, and, and this, is, this is some other algebra, not, not the algebra that, that is acting here. Okay? Uh, and, and then we're going to identify very explicitly what the kernel of this map is. I'm going to put it up there. Okay? Okay? Identify very explicitly what the kernel of that map is. And we have something, and so the, the quotient by the kernel of the preserving of the little suit from the there. Then we've got something mapping objectively into that. And finally, we'll realize that that can be got. Uh, then this, well, that this map can or in, and can put us through that map up, up there. Call this map. Okay, so let's. Um, there's a little bit more of this diagram to draw, but we can start explaining the group. So we can start and some of the diagram. So first of all, why is gamma n subjective? Uh, why do we know that the generators we gave are good enough to actually produce all, all, all maps of the network representation category? And subjective. That that up there, and I'll just write a super screen name to add the power sense to the solution. Okay, so camera range is going to be subjective just for this file. Spider, this quotient of the free spider, where we had in those any relations at all, 
We're also going to fill in the top corner with these things called ladder diagrams. So you map both into here and down into here, making a whole diagram. So let's let's see how we get uh, do this. So suppose can the end of some diagram omega oh is here. And uh, let's assume, it turns out this doesn't lose any generality. Boundary uh, of the standard omega is, uh, is all already adopted. And since these tags uh, let you change the orientation of the strand, and fail to write down one diagram, one, one relation that you have. I mean, if these were the only relations, there'd be no way of getting rid of uh, lots of tags. So we're going to use the we take two opposite tags. Okay. So since since a tag is is a, is a particular an isomorphism by this relation, if you're looking at some diagram and the boundary isn't all oriented upwards, you just put some tags in around the boundary and make it oriented upwards. A gamma range is going to be zero or one is zero. Okay. So suppose we've got that. Uh, we can pick some M. Notice that there's this new parameter M that I introduced in that diagram. We're going to make it a different one depending on three omega that we're trying to work with. And the lid, omega tilde, a lot of that. We started with our guy down here, omega, and we're going to show that we can always find some M so that we can move it up to an omega tilde. Now, uh, by the creativity of all these diagrams, you push when we get down around the other side of the diagram, this funny quotient of GLM that we have here, it's also going to map to zero uh, via B and N. Okay. But the whole way we set this thing up is that P and N is injected. To work, I need to show you what is going on in this diagram. Why this okay. So, this is where the representation theory comes in. We need to understand what on earth is this map here. BM, GLM, the representation theory of this. So, this is the, the title of the paper uh, Skew How Duality. What that says is that if you look at the stereo algebra for CN, tensor CN, this carries computing actions. So in particular, what we have is uh, we want to look at the, uh, the 
And so in the maps, in which CN is CN, this is circuit of the The main content of skew counter. The version is breaking out. This is this is a version of symmetric algebra. And I mean, on that note, uh, something we're thinking about at the moment is doing an entirely different version of all of this, where where the label really is about symmetric. I mean, sort of This board suddenly has switched to just using the classical roots rather than the, the quantized ones. Um, the, I mean, some chunk of our paper is actually extending this new hard reality to the quantum case, which wasn't really worked out before. So to, I'm just going to talk in the classical case now to keep up simple what our paper does with the quantum case. Is that the roots of the as well? No, just, just one more year for the original quantum case. Okay. So let's expand this, this out a little bit and understand the, the consequences of what. Thank you, Scott, for the good three hours. In the first place. In the first place. Yeah, I mean, the reason to bring the nice thing about this whole story, which is that um, and everything we do here really does work with the, the evil forms of these problems. So you expect the aspect of So let's just sort of expand it out a little bit. First of all, with CN tensor CN, we can expand out this tensor product and think of it as being with CN with some itself n times. And then when you expand out the wave now, this is a direct sum of the sequence is K. Of the uh, K1, CN is up to the end. So, this is the sequence is K at just uh, length n sequences of integers between 0 and n. So that's just a sequence of linear algebra. And so, this thing that we were talking about here, this new hydrology, and the morphisms of the CN tensor CN, we get this formula and see that it's the direct sum of the pairs of sequences K and L on um, with K. So I'm going to introduce a little bit of the notation. A uh, break of power with a sequence in the exponent just means this is what I call Diagram, I said, Oh, I want to put dots on top of these UGLMs. So, what are those dots meant to represent? Those are uh, 
So the blue students had good form of the quantity, uh, which means that along with the usual generators you expect to see in, in the developing algebra, your e's and f's and so on, you have these weight space algebras, uh, which you should think of as projecting out the lambda, projecting onto the, the, the lambda weight space. Not sure how I'm going to say about that, but the, the nice thing now is that you can write this subjection in a slightly finer form. So if you take the, this, uh, this envelope model of the DLM, which we know is happening subjectively onto, the, onto this big rate sum here, but you just look at a small piece of this, you cut this huge algebra down. By the things that sit between two of these weight space asymptotes and L, well, that piece is subjective to that one on a single one of these signs. Okay, so this is the version of the sweet hydrology we mentioned what we use. Now, let's describe where the generators go in this map over here. Well, this thing is generated by all these EIs and ETIs. What's, what's EI? So this was in um, well, no, so remember there's implicitly an M on the right hand side oh. here. M is the length of these sequences. Okay. So for each M, we've got a step on this. So where does EI go to? Well, what I'm going to do is draw a spider diagram here, which is a little bit genius, and what I mean is, what I don't mean to camera of that spider. And the representations correspond to that diagram. EI is just a sense of the diagram, mostly political spins, but then at the i place, you, uh, you send it in labeled by y plus. So here, we had these all the, the labels on these strings for ki, we have this little diagram. Where one across. So it's about three. This is Ki plus one minus one, and that's Ki plus one. And then also this. Okay, and then you're meant to, you're meant to be interpreting this diagram as a matter of representation of the gap in the same too. And that's what, this is what skewed out the other one. And similarly, Ki is sent out to skewed out the other one to the map. Okay, so I've now described for you uh, this map here. So, uh, yeah. Well, okay, so, so this is so this here is a long from Rate K1 tends to rate K2. Oh, so, 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 so. Yeah, so this is this is an app for a big tensor product of exterior powers to a slightly different tensor product of exterior powers where we increase the exponent of one exterior power. Okay, so that was the map VM. Each M is some map that of course only sees a very small part of its representation. We don't need hits the home spaces. Uh, so, plug length in the three things we've got. Okay. So, next we want to understand this part of the diagram. What's the term of, of this map for the smooth hydro algae universe? I think I would like to erase my picture in the diagram. By, uh, by the 
weight space out of it. But some collision is weight space out of it. It's in particular, the, the, the kernel is generated if it's ideal in UGLM, consisting of all of the items at weights k, where k is not a weight. But some collection of sort of the, um, this is basically in something the same. Take all of the weight space item points for mu when mu is in something bigger than that or, or outside of the weights that appear in the, in the representation of the thread. And so in the lemma, so if you take UGLM, the quotient of that line is ideals, what you get is the direct sum. Over all weights less than lambda of the endomorphism space of uh, the, the representation of the highest weight. Okay. So the, this is sort of a funny statement that uh, we're sure people must know, but it doesn't seem to be done anywhere. Um, it's something relatively simple about the GLM. And the, the proof is basically just arbitrary. This left hand side you can easily see is a finite dimensional algebra because you've killed almost all the weight spaces. And so all that you need to do to identify what it is is describe what its, what its simple modules are. And There's one. Uh, okay, so we need one more piece of uh, of smooth algebraity now to uh, to get what we want. Uh, the statement about the kernel. So, uh, in fact, if you look at Take the square root power of that piece of code. You can actually describe exactly how it decomposes as representations of SLM, SLM cross GLM. So, 
this is a representation of SLM, that's a representation of GLM. So mu here is a, uh, an, an n down the point of, uh, of GLM, meaning just the sequence of m integers all between 0 and n. And uh, you can interpret that as a wave of GLM, and by uh, rather than it's a partition of different transfers, you can interpret it as a wave of SLM, and this is the decomposition of this guy. That's your apps. And so then, when you look at uh, the SLM linear maps of this guy by itself, that's just the direct sum. Same set of views, we can see the map back, and then we've got the lemma. That's just the Well, one of these ideals where this is the highest, where lambda k is the highest way of that over there. Okay. And uh, yeah, and then so now. Okay, so what else do we need to fill in this diagram? Uh, we still need this map here. We need to we've described everything up here in the, the top right corner. We actually need to connect it to the diagram that we've been talking about. So, okay, uh, I guess I didn't define it. This thing here is, is the definition of this, uh, this object with the superscript N. Yeah, I don't really know. I don't think you can do that again. It's just this quotient by this idea of all line for this outside or something. Okay. So we need this map. generators, uh, and sort of not that surprising what to do, you know what I said before, you send the generators the I and by to those diagrams in this file. And now, sort of the, the, the bit that sort of justifies and explains all of these relations that we wrote down over here, we need to check that this really is a map. That is, that whatever relations we have here, both for defining relations of GLM and the quotient we took, uh, are really in the kernel of this map. So we need to verify, verify relations. And essentially what we're going to do here is make up these relations as we go along in order to ensure that exactly this works. So let's, uh, let's do a few of these, because some of them are actually quite interesting. I guess some of them are boring. But let's look at what well, I can. Let me extend, extend this slide. In GLM, there are these reduced powers. Let me tell you where they go to as well. So we've got this relation just in GLM. That let you. Uh, E's and F's with adjacent indices, so if your i is meant to be j plus or minus 1, you're just going to go to two different parts of each other. And if you think about what this means in terms of the diagrams, this is just the same. If you have this, r and s, that's the same as this. So now I'm going to have a lower base above. Okay. And this here is a consequence, in fact, equivalent to this relation here. We're just applying that relation. Inside that, we've got the it's ignoring two vertical lines on that side. The equivalence comes you can sort of take a partial trace on both sides and cover that. Okay, there are a few more easy ones. Um, the, <coughs> if I can find any, this is the diagram. 
to look at these quickly saving interesting relations. So we can we have some e's and f's at the same index. Representations, the say relations automatically hold, even if you didn't close them. But we want to work over, I mean, first we want to work over the, the, we want to do the quantum group version, we want to work with the equal form. We really have to do it ourselves. What does it say? It says, Zero in the uh, in the quantum group. But here's the proof. Let's take this uh, this middle term. Where does that get sent to? That gets sent to this guy. Uh, any vertical strands are just are uh, always oriented upwards, so not going to bother backwards. So what do we do first? Well, we take uh, that edge there and apply the commutation relation here. And rewrite this as a square. Now let's say we've got two. Okay, so a uh, key thing about this proof is that we're going outside the world of diagrams, which are obviously in the image of this function. We're really actually using the, the, the plain answer top of the diagram. Okay, so we just apply i equals h around that edge there. And now we apply this relation that lets us switch squares on this simple square. And when we expand out the sum, we find that there are exactly two terms. But in each term, one of the edges of this new square that we get is labeled by zeros, so we can just erase that. And if we uh, these labels, one, okay, and then a tiny bit of plain isotopy tells me that uh, these diagrams here are exactly one of the one two diagrams. Just straight from inside. Oh, sorry. Uh, so this diagram is that This this diagram is that. So uh, so so two point one one. We think things like this. Okay. So you can apply square switch uh, you can apply computation on both sides. We write this as And then you can use the so this is, that's like the x two that has these again by ones. And then you can use this binary relation to say that's equal to one or two times the square of the by two. And so that little that piece of diagram right there is a is a one over one two times the one. Okay, so I think this is sort of a, a strangely cute part of the whole, the whole picture that you check the say relation by actually using the plane structure of that. Okay, so I'm sorry that I've gone a long time, I did one more ahead of time, but I didn't want to waste a 
kind of quick. Um, okay, our final obligation, remember in the, the proof that we gave, we said that when we're trying to prove objectivity, we're looking at some element of W, it was being sent to zero in the representation theory, we're going to find a lift of that W back up into one of the latter diagrams. So the latter diagram. It's just one color and drawn. She's representing a bunch of vertical uprights and some, and some runs going across with different labels. And essentially, our, our final remaining obligation is to show that you can take any spider diagram and rewrite it modular the relations as a linear dimension. First of all, on the planar isotopy of the diagram, that just pushes everything on the front of the cuts of the diagram out to the right of the, of the back of the points. And further, do an isotopy inside here, so ring uh, of reverted. So let's say you start with this spider diagram. Now it's, it's actually extremely easy to turn this into a ladder diagram if you're being sensible. You just put zero strings like that, and it's a ladder diagram right away. We're not allowed to do that, we've got to follow this silly recipe. So, first of all, we isotope everything out into uh, sort of Morse forms, just to pull it out to the right, the critical points out to different places. And then we do some superimposing. Strings, so we put an N string there, a zero string there. Uh, but you put N on zero depends on the orientation of these critical points. And then you just sort of start making things look more like a ladder diagram. So, Go back to these curvy pieces you started with and put uh, some vertical double lines in there, and you end up with the following ridiculously complicated ladder diagram. All these double lines now are still with the 
your audience. You can check. Yeah. 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 This is an example of data that drive out purposes and see who works with data out purposes. But it's really easy to see. And that tells you how to produce your lists. I'll start your data out. Okay. Okay, guys, all that is it. Stop there. So, that's great. So, what was the follow up on what? Yeah, so how to say this? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, the, basically, the point is that instead of this new GLN, there's a categorified version of that now. Uh, an extra categorical level, some kind of little screw over it. And there's an obvious analog. Of our quotient at sort of our, our, our quotient corresponding to SLN. Yeah. Um, which is sort of, I mean, it really is some quotient by some ideal in a um, in a two categorical sense rather than an algebra sense. And so then the conjecture is that this thing, when you form that quotient, that thing really is the uh, sort of the categorified representation here of SLN sort of. The, the sub and sub of the so, you, so the exactly that our our isomorphism there uh, should lead to uh, to something. I mean, the problem is this this right hand side hasn't ever been defined uh, in the general SLA. But the point is that it should be defined as this. And in particular, um, this thing I mean has a local presentation. So instead of having these trapeze on graphs describing the representation of this whole you now have drum rooms in three space, certain simple intersections in different places uh, that you can sort of read up. But basically, I'm just like this thing. You now have the back guy in the categorical version, there are some operators acting on the EIs, and they turn to little, little phones, families that look like this. So these letter diagrams go to other places. No. So they do. Okay. That's a cold ladder diagram? So a cold structure was in physics was a classical. I was not like remember the two of them all together. So I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Probably thinking about diagrams that do not go draw that let them count one on the curves in certain kind of situations. But I feel like those diagrams are very, very different. These ones. And, and, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you.